Hi and welcome back to another video of JPlay. I am Marcus and as you can see today I'm starting my solo playthrough of Galactic Era, which the designer Jenny Jones kindly provided me a review copy. And yeah, I already did an unboxing the other day, so not sure if you watched it or not. Definitely not a prerequisite to watch this playthrough here. I have already set up the board according to the solo rules, which are pretty involved. They come with a little booklet on their own. The standard rulebook is also already pretty extensive. I've never played this game before and also not in solo, so it's a complete blind playthrough for me. So expect a lot more goofs than you already used when watching playthroughs on my channel. <laughs> I really try to do my best and I'm pretty sure I will not cover this game basically in one single video simply because it allows me or allows you to repair some of my mistakes. Maybe you can chime in a little bit, whatever, walk me through some of the intricacies in respect to tactics or strategy in this game. So maybe today I will only look at the first era of the game and I will explain all these things as I go of course. Uh, before I get started a huge shout out to all of my patrons and channel members out there. You guys are really 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 amazing. Really appreciate all your support. So if you want to support my little channel you will find a link to my page on Patreon. You can join me here on YouTube. You can whatever. Click that little thanks button beneath the video for a small or not so small donation. Like and subscribe all that stuff really appreciate that. And yeah, I think with that being said, we should be pretty much ready to go. Again, I've already prepared the game board and in a solo game, you only play with two of these sectors. In a full six player game, I think you're playing with all seven. I think there are seven of those tiles. They're all dual sided. But again, if you want to watch, want to see all the components, go watch my unboxing video. I will start down here at Silox. So this is my homeworld. It comes with with a special, let's say, starting ability, which allows me to add two more of my population discs underneath it. This little Q, uh, globe on its own is worth six of those. But again, because of that, of that starting bonus, I get an extra two, um, which then also immediately translates into two of these discs missing here on my population track. And in case you're wondering, yes, this game comes in two languages, English and German. For some of the components, they are exclusively English and or German. In this case, this population track, because it's dual layered, it's basically showing both languages of population track and Bevölkerungsleister. So learn some German with me. In the solo mode of the game, you are trying to earn, basically beat your own kind of score. And this comes with a nice table. So the goal of this video is to maybe make it above 69 points becoming Luna, but let's not count on this. So this is basically the minimum level. So if I'm getting Luna, then I'm pretty much lost the game. But again, I'm not doing this to really show you how to play this game well. I really am here to really walk you through some of my thoughts and yeah, make you, let's say, aware of this, um, yeah, I think relatively under the radar kind of game. I randomly selected a so-called space people, basically my civilization. This is the, these are the bro janitors. And I also decided to play them on the, let's say, light side on the good side of things. So this is the STO service to others, which makes things a little bit tougher for me in order to, let's say, declare war and whatnot. But still, I may gain some more easy points this way. And there is a chance that I can flip this to the other side and then I'm no longer, maybe I can show this to you, STO, then I'm an STS the progenitor, so I really can then yeah, colonize, I can subjugate, I can conquer all kind of nasty stuff. But here, because I'm on the light side, I have to follow the prime directive here, um, which doesn't allow me, for example, to yeah, take over. Um, what are those calls in this in this game? Not pre-warp civilizations, but yeah, I think you get the <laughs> idea in this case. So I can only go, really, I can ally with um, highly developed species or I can colonize basically a barren or an empty planet that is. And I can liberate um, if one of the STS players, again, maybe I should explain this to you um, in more detail, but yeah, I can still liberate um, planets that have been taken over by STS civilizations, that is. 
Speaking about my, let's say, competitors in this game, we have the Slavers that are here, the red players. The Slavers are playing more or less a normal game. So basically they are simulating somewhat of an actual player. Um, whereas the genetic farmers, they still have their technology track, they still have their ships, but that's about it. So they're not playing in or whatever, building new colonies and whatnot. They're traveling through the galaxy, trying to develop their technologies. Um, I can trade with them, I can fight them if I want to, um, depending a little bit on the goals. But apart from that, they are really only here to, I think, kind of, if I play them correctly, I think they will rather help me than they're doing harm to me. At least that's how I think about those. The red guys, those are really the tough nuts. Um, this is the, Those are the folks that I have to battle. They come with these red ships. Again, that's, that's my pick. I really like that. They're really Klingon-like, so I think aggressive enough. So I think, yeah, I wanted something fierce for their ship. So they will do all kinds of nasty stuff. Conquer other planets, even my planets, for example. They will combat me. They will relatively easily declare war on me. Right now, both of those are at war at each other. So that's basically depicted by this. But right now, they're at peace with me. I think they don't know about me. Um, but I think the slavers, they will declare war whenever they can do that. The genetic farmers do not, unless again I'm declaring war against them, which I can only do when I turn to the STS, STS side of my galactic civilization. Up here we have the central board, so this is depicting the victory points. Only I am really scoring victory points. The red disc um, from the slavers is only here to depict the difficulty level. I decided really to play this on the easy difficulty level, which means we will leave them at zero. The only marker that is actually moving throughout the game is the blue one. I don't know why I put out the yellow one for the genetic farmers, but there is that. This is the round tracker, a little bit underwhelming one, but I take it for now. Um, then we have a random um, galactic story out there. There are four of those in the game. You can dis assign those randomly. You can pick and choose if you want. I really decided to go random and this is the galactic journeys. And depending in which era we are in, we will be able to score um, various victory points throughout the game. In the first era of light, um, we will definitely get a point at, e at the end of each round if we will remain STO for that round, of course, or service to others, so good character. And we will also get a victory point for each uh, civilization we will be in contact with. And right now there will be only two contacts. So I'm relatively certain I will not be able to manage that in the first round of the game, at least very, very unlikely. Ah, depends a little bit how those folks are moving. Then we have an era of darkness, which is then a little bit more beneficial for service to self kind of civilizations. So the bad folks, they will immediately gain victory points if there's so this would be maybe a time at the end of this um, era to say let's 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 switch side or so or maybe at the start of the second era and then we have a last era another era of light where again it's more beneficial to be on the light side of things i decided to not go with a galactic goal it even says here leave this empty for an introductory game and if you are playing with those galactic goals you will also then increase the let's say targets in order to reach a certain level on that scoring track. So I think if we are below 69 points, we would be considered sublunar, for example. But again, as I've never played this game before, I decided to leave it out for now. And there come, I, thought, I don't know, six or so different of those. And again, if you combine all these things together, different galactic story, different galactic goals, different civilizations, really replayability is pretty okay in this game. Let's have a quick look at our domination card. I drew this randomly as well. Now these domination cards, they come in two, let's say sections. You have an upper section, which is basically this huge thing up here, which is spatial, which says own 10 stars. If we make it, we will reveal it and then we say, okay, hey, we will score 11 points, which is not bad. I mean, again, we we want to reach 70, but still. And, or I should say, or you could go for the B section of this card, which would then also allow you to whatever, score some points. The one thing that you need to, to know right now, you can only either, we'll only score two of these cards, max. So it's either two Bs or you do one A and one B. We will get a second one, I think, at the start of the era of darkness. Then at the end of the era of the darkness, we can then also, I think, replace one or so. I really have to check that in more detail, but ultimately you will score up to two of these cards. And maybe I should explain you the B effect here. You will 
get basically two points for every three um, stars that you control or you can say you will simply score your propulsion level and then it will it's like for like i started at a propulsion level of one so this card is definitely worth one victory point to me but it can be much more than that okay i think yeah, maybe I should have explained to you the special ability of the progenitors. We get four free colonized growth actions throughout the game. For each one we are taking, we will put it down here. And if it's at zero, it's at zero. And I think it stays on the same level if we are flipping back and forth. At least I think I can check that. Apart from that, I think this table down here is basically the same for all the um, civilizations, there could be some outliers because I haven't checked them all. There are 17 in the game. Uh, so yeah, also with that pretty much endless replayability. I have also randomly assigned the starting position. So I will be second, the slavers will be first. And of course there is a handy dandy overview here. So the first thing that you do in turn, in player turn order, again, the slavers will be first in this case, they will either create Eight swap fleets they will move and then they will combat and they will do that basically for the entirety of the fleet similar to Star Trek Ascendancy you really do your whole stuff before you're handing things over to another player right now none of the AI players have any ships on board so we can simply pass over this so then it's basically up to us we do have some ships already on the board as part of setup so we start with three ships and we have the boring ships and I'm using the upgrade pack um, basically for those ships I think in the standard edition or so there all the players had the same ship models now that we have basically six different kind of ship models i'm basically using the standard ones because i'm playing blue it's a strange blue i must say it's a very purple blue but there is also a darker purple in this game um but yeah there is that we can either use these ship pieces or we can transform those into fleets. And in order to do that, we will basically use one of these counters. So one ship equals one of those. We can also transform them basically into a three. We have chips with three. We can also build them basically like this. And then they would disappear and then they would um, pretty much move as a fleet on the board. Of course, this will be done face down. Um, so the players never or the other players never exactly know how many ships I have. Yes, some folks with very good memory can of course remember this for the entirety of the game, but there are ways later on to use dummy ships. For example, I can exchange ships between fleets. In this case, I do not really need to show them what ships I'm tra um, basically transferring from one fleet to the others. As I'm playing basically against myself, there is no need for me to play these hidden. There is still a need though later on to use fleets because fleets also come with special powers making them stronger making them faster and making them more effective against other uh, planets or star systems for example but i think right now i don't really think that we have to do that i think one piece one thing that we have to do is really to reach those planets as soon as possible. And again, we can move them all ships now in the same movement phase or I don't move them at all. Our current propulsion is three because we are still on the first level of our propulsion track. Mm, and basically the further we develop the more movement we have and this propulsion is basically per ship but right now again our movement is three and i think with a three there is a lot we can reach right we can set one ship one two three because we are here and even when we are passing through we can also scout so we can have a look at that and that's basically uh let's call it a virgin planet when you want to use star trek ascendancy terms here this is something i I can actually take over I can colonize this so this is pretty cool of course I in a normal game I would only do that for me showing this to me but in this case I can scout there are also ability um, where you can then remote scout for example a little bit based on your I think it's the spirituality which allows you to yeah exactly where you can then do a remote scouting so we still have two more ships so let's move this one one two three down here to Barnett's star again four, four, four to four that's that's lovely so let's also scout here okay that's a civilization we can ally with so far i'm really liking my explorations and then i think with this ship up here i want to start moving towards the other sector here because this is where the fancy stuff is so we have these 
alien artifacts here and I have brought out that this map basically completely randomly so they're all really far away from me making life for me much more difficult so let's basically move this ship one two three spaces up here yeah the rules tell you to put this on its side for these ships it's a bit more difficult but I think we can remember that at least at this point in time so let's also scout here and that's a primitive culture this is a world we can never take over as a let's say good civilization that's our prime directive we might whatever send scouting teams down there we might also send I don't know yeah you know these science teams which would do behavioral studies and whatnot there are really some very very cool episodes in TNG not sure why I'm already com always comparing this to TNG right now sorry apologies I will stop that now but again I can never take them over if I would switch now to the other dark side of things I would be like able to do that and maybe something worth considering but those were basically my movements I'm out of ships I'm also out of movement so in this case I can end it here we could now or would move now into the combat phase right now we are don't see any combat in here we are not in a let's say other sector with other ships and whatnot so I will stop it here which you now means we are moving into the growth phase in a normal multiplayer game each player would now pick two of these um, growth tiles here not randomly but yeah face down and we would also go with either one of those tech counters here or with the, these these are turn order change tiles here and they are all basically on the other side they are pretty neutral so the other players don't know that in this solo mode I basically choose my or pick do my choices and then we will roll the dice for the other civilizations so yeah let's quickly yeah, let's consider that I think again we will go with two growth actions and looking at the current map here I definitely want to do at least one taking over a new star action we can do that up to twice but that's then basically it for this round unless of course we want to start using our progenitors here our special abilities we get free colonized growth actions and we can get one of those on Aldebaran right so I think let's do that for now for the other I think we will then go for this one here which then allows us to ally with Barnard star which is down here and then I still have one more left to maybe go for I think that's something that we have to do I think we want to also start researching stuff we really need to develop our technology so I think these are the two growth actions plus the one freebie we gained from our civilization the progenitors I already start to like them actually and then I need to decide which technology I will go for right again I can go for all five of those areas and oof, that's now a tricky one especially if you don't really know the game it's a tough call for me I think for now I will not go for military I would gain an advanced fleet tactic which is never a bad thing of course I don't know let's let's consider that this one here the remote view is not a bad thing so for the spirituality and spirituality if we are basically going all the way up here to level six anytime we are losing those discs basically from our track up here and maybe I should have mentioned this before the number that we will see here the eight that's currently our victory point so the more we remove from this is the more points we will score at the end of the game um, and again uh, if you're losing let's say a colony or a planet for example they typically go back on this track here when they basically when you reached this level six here they ascend they will go someplace else I don't know Q continuum or whatnot sorry again but yeah though so I think that's something that you can definitely um, consider but I think I will I think I will go for the propulsion I think getting more yeah being more mobile here I think could make sense genetics is also not bad because it allows me to get extra disc onto the board but as I'm not doing this just yet no I think I will leave it at this I will go for a propulsion technology 
bump. So that's basically my pick. I get two of those, yeah, gain new star. One of those is a colonize, which I will be using here. The other one is an ally one, and I will basically research my propulsion. Unfortunately, I'm only player two, which means now I have to roll for the AI players. We will start for the slavers, so that's a four. And we will come to that, what they do. And this uh, is the die for the genetic farmers. In most cases, they will simply up some of their technologies. That's basically all that they do. And oh boy, I think one thing I already forgot, actually. Yeah, mmm, mmm, mmm. That may change, does it? No, I think not. I should have also given them a starting bonus. So let's quickly do that now. I will use my J-Play die for that. That's the one, in case you are wondering. So apologies for that. So that's for the, we will start here with the genetic farmers. So that's a one. So they will start on military level two again. Doesn't really matter too much in this case. Then we roll for the slavers. That's a four, which means their robotics, oh what? The robotics and their military is already on level two. Are you kidding me? Okay, that's definitely good for them because this means they will immediately start with one advanced fleet tactic. They will always go for the times two one in this case. And I think I have to simply roll on where it goes. I don't have my 10 sided die here and that really drives me crazy. So the next time I'm recording, I need to think about that. So if I'm rolling a six, I will roll again. So it goes on one of those. I think we do that randomly. Yes, of course. Now I'm rolling the six. Now I'm rolling the four. That's much more like it. One, two, three, and four. So their D fleet is basically, oh wow. If they're using the D fleet, they are much, much faster now. Okay, I have so basically a range plus two. But okay, now it's finally time to determine what the players or the AI players are doing. We will start with the slavers. They are the starting player. They rolled a four, which means they are researching robotics. So they're going one step further. And on top of this, they will now spawn ships at the center sector wormhole, which is good and bad. So this is the wormhole for the center sector. And the wormholes usually work a little bit differently when you play that on multiplayer. In this case, they're only spawning points for the AI. So in this case, they will start their journeys up here. So we will see the first ship coming in. And because they have just <laughs> increased their robotics level, they get three extra ships right off the bat. And they get basically ships as per the population track. Right now their population track is fully filled, which means their base value is a two plus their robotics level, which is now a three. So that's already five ships. And the difficulty level is at zero. So it's five ships in total, which we are spawning up here. I will somewhat place them a little bit offset here because they will transform into a fleet relatively soon. For now, there are four, five ships that are moving out later on and they are relatively far away. But of course, they will go after those alien relics. So they will take those away from us, which really sucks actually. <laughs> But okay then, now it's up to us. This was their growth act. They never get any bonuses or whatever. This is basically what they get. We are the second player, so we will now um, determine our stuff. We already kind of yeah, telegraphed what we are going to do. This was our extra one where we have spent our special power here already, um, which in this case means we are building our very first, oops, colony over here. So we have colonized this world. So we're taking one of these discs and placing this here on Aldebaran. Nicely done. And there is also a table on your civilization here, which tells you how many ships you need in order to do what you need to do. So in this case, again, we only need one ships for colonize and or allying with a planet. So it's basically the same thing down here. We are removing this. We are taking one population disk from our population tracker and placing this onto Bernard Star. So we have taken care of all of our, let's say, gain star actions. And maybe let's have a quick look at our population track here. We have removed two of those, which means we would score 10 points at the end of the game if that's the end result. And in case you're wondering, the last one up here is 60 points. So um, we could really score 60 points from that piece because up here, um, I think we are getting two for each of those discs that are being removed. That's basically true for the topmost row of our population track here. And we are now, um, I think, no, that's the same thing. We are still in our, that's our base level when we are deploy ships. This would be the three. So if we would remove this one here, we would move already into the four area. So we could be allowed 
to get more and more ships from that. Last but not least, we are researching and we decided to research propulsion. Maybe I already regret it actually, but again, we have rolled the dice, so I'm not taking this back. But in this case, we are simply moving over here. So we are at for the next level, we could already use Stargate, jump between own stars with three plus population, which is blockable. Blockable means that, let's say, civilizations we're at war with can basically stop that if they are getting in the way, physically in the way. So they have to send their ships there in order to block me accordingly. Okay, that's that. So now we will deal with the genetic farmers here. They will simply research their spirituality. Again, this could help me if we want to trade with them. I could go there in order to learn their technologies. And I think I already cheated. I cheated. I cheated. Yeah, I did. Because I forgot about this one here. Change turn board up. Automatically use this result if they have no ships on the board. So in order of the six, uh, two, I should have do, done a six actually. Ah, that was bad. It's not the end of the world. I can fix that. And again, bear with me. I'm learning the game. I keep forgetting stuff. I knew about this, but just in this instance, when I looked at this table, I said, oh yeah, wait a second, there was this one piece. But okay, not the end of the world. First thing, they will change their turn order up, which means they would have exchanged basically this with that. So I'm now last, which kind of sucks, of course, but that's life. And then we spawn one ship at a wormhole. Yeah, again, we will do that now. We have three wormholes out and I believe this is randomly determined which wormhole. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Accordingly, let's use this die here. And that's a two, which means, oh, that's maybe not bad. That's really not bad. So maybe we can meet them relatively early on and start trading with them. And again, this would also help me basically getting in contact with them. Now being last may not be the worst thing, actually. Okay, cool. Good that I caught this. I already repaired um, their basically moved their spirituality track back to zero. But I think as long as they have ships out there, they will now basically roll their die normally. Of course, we could go after them. The slavers could go after them. They fight each other anyway. But for now, they're here on the board. So that's now basically really the end of the growth phase. Now we could trade here. Right now, we can't remote trade whatsoever. We would have to be in the, at, either at one of their star systems or one of their ships. That's not the case. We can immediately jump over this pretty cool stuff trading. And in this case, um, we will then move into the scoring phase, which we do according to our galactic journey here. So because we are on the light side, we will score one point just because we are cool and awesome. We would gain one more victory point for each player we are in contact with. Again, that's something that we couldn't have done, unfortunately. But that's basically the end of the very first round of the game. And I think I will keep going. I should be able to speed things up from here. So we will start again with the slavers, right? They are the starting players. So the first thing that we do is to roll for their movement. So let's quickly do that. And that's a three. And in this case, all ships move as close as possible to the center hex of their sector, which means those five ships, they will always move as part of an entire hex. The genetic farmers, they move or they roll for each of their individual ships. The slavers move entire hexes. And I think as of now, I will start using those fleet counters. So right now it's not considered to be a fleet. It's still uh, five ships, but I will use this five counter in order to remember because it really makes movement much, much simpler actually. So they're moving one, two, three spaces towards the center hex. They cannot reach it because their propulsion level is still at three. So they will also not really explore that planet here, which is kind of a good thing, I think. Again, I'm hope, really hoping I'm not messing this up. I really need to check if they wouldn't stop here at Procyon. And no, I think I'm good. Next, it's the genetic farmers. We will roll for their movement. That's a four, which means uh, that's here, right? Each ship moves to any star system within range. 
if there is no star within range, then it moves as close as possible to the nearest one. And in this case, they can reach, I think their propulsion is at three. So they can reach one, two, one, two, three. But again, I think this nebula here, this phenomenon, I think this also gives them a plus two. When you start your turn on this nebula, you get a plus two movement. So in theory, one, two, three, four. I think they also get that bonus here, so they could also make it to my homeworld. Again, they will never attack me, so that's really a good thing. Um, so I think in this case, we will roll a die. One, two, three, four, five, six, one. So they're moving to Hep, which is good. So we are now finally in contact with them, so we can trade. Oh, that's so cool. I love that already. Cool stuff. And then it's basically back to me. I definitely want to leave this ship here. I want to stay in contact with them. I want to trade with them. We will get an extra point for them because of the galactic journey. So that's really huge. This ship here is kind of, yeah, it doesn't really help us, but I think I will definitely move one of those ships. So I think one, two, we are moving the ship here to White Knight. Really love the names of those star systems here. And maybe we should simply start moving with this ship up here somewhat should we i think i have to i think i have to one two three four i can move it four spaces now so maybe okay that would change or maybe i will move oh no let's let's do that instead one two three four we are still in contact with them and now it would allow me to move this ship towards i don't know this planet up here this is a neutron star it's a system i cannot enter unless i have propulsion five or six but i think let's still move it one two three and four so with our next movement we might make it here unless again this fella is taking things away from us but for now i think i'm okay i have moved all of my ships i think i really have to start building more ships this round actually wow so many things to do so little time really I love those agonizing choices here. But this means we are now moving back into the growth phase again. Again, I have to still do my picks before I'm rolling the dice. And of course, one thing I forgot was to scout. Oh no, that's another primitive world. I cannot take this one over. Yeah, there are two of each of those. So in the home sector, the way how that works is um, you basically bring out two of those um, pre-warp civilizations, two of those empty planets, and two of those um, yeah, more advanced civilizations, and then you bring them out randomly. In the center space, you are basically doing things a little bit different. You take three of each, and then you're still populating each of the planets. So there is, in the center sector, there's a little bit more randomness to things. So they, it could be that whatever all three of those primitive worlds are, which really do not do me any good, this situation right now. So I cannot take this one over, but I I do know for a fact that these two should be then in my uh, touching distance here. Definitely good to know. Okay, still, what am I going to do? Which means I'm most likely not going to do, I think that's, that's good. We are not going to go for a colonize action this round. That's pretty much clear. So I think we are going for a growth action maybe, bringing out more discs. And then I think, I think we need either more ships or we are researching. On the other hand, we could also go for this, but I think I want to grow, right? Because when you grow your planets, you get more points, of course, you get more ships for that. I think I definitely need, I, I think I need to research genetics. That I think was a mistake from my previous turn, actually. I should have started with genetics. I will explain you why in a second. So I think this is a must. And we will go for the genetics accordingly. So that's definitely given. For those two, I really don't know. Should I? Mm, I think I need more ships for now. I will do the growth next turn or so. I need more ships for sure. The slavers are coming. So we will do those two actions and now we roll the dice. Again, we will start with the slavers. That's a five. That can't be good, right? And then we do the same for the genetic farmers. Also a five. Okay, now I'm really curious what they're up to. So that's an interesting one. So the slavers will go for the five and will go for a change order down, which means they will go from a two 
down. Okay, I have to check now um, because this is the five and this is the five for them. But no, they're not doing change turn order. So we can basically ignore that, which means the genetic farmers will now be um, the starting players. So they will basically switch positions. Not sure what, sh what this does with us, but we will see. Then they will gain a star. And I think we, they can't gain a star right now. Exactly, remove from disk from their population track if they did not gain any star. And they didn't because like us, they have to be next to a star or in a star system. In this case, they are still removing a disk here. Um, but in this case, it goes to the slavers of board power. Board, the first position doesn't do anything. The second position, they will never go for a peace offering anymore. The last space is really the frightening one because for each disc that they are placing there, they will simply dis uh, subtract five points from us. And we can go to the minus in this game. Okay, I already start to hate that. <laughs> so that can't be good. But I believe there is more, right? Yeah, they gain a star, they didn't. But then they grow population. If they cannot grow any population, they can't. Then they spawn ships at the center sector wormhole instead, which I guess again is five for them, right? And I have to keep these ships here a little bit um, separately because they will really start um, forming fleets as soon as they are running out of physical ships. That's basically the trigger for them. For now, we'll still go with the disc and I will still put them simply somewhere else and then I still run out of those. But again, they are bringing out another fleet of ships. So they're basically like a pest here and I are festering here through the center sector. Okay, I think this was their turn. Then it's the genetic farmers. They will research genetics in this case. They have a ship out there, which means we can ignore this bullet point down here. So they're going one space up here. And if I would have known that, I would have researched something else because we are going to trade with them later on. But yeah, that's life can't change. We can still trade with them. That's a good thing. So now it's over to us. Again, we will research our genetics. Let's do that real quick. So we are moving one one step further here, which basically means we get a bonus when we are going for a growth action later on. We're basically growing population growth action. That is, um, typically you are very limited in respect how you can grow your, your colonies, your planets, unless you have the bonuses here. So really increasing the genetics really can make a big difference in the game. And then we are going to build some ships. Again, our base level is a three based on our population track. So we already get three ships right off the bat. So I take that. So that's the minimum. Then we can look at our robotics track. Unfortunately, I haven't increased that at at all, which means it's still a three. We would also, in theory, gain extra ships based on, let's say, asteroid spaces we are currently occupying with at least one of our ships. I think it's considered to be we are mining there or so, but that's not the case, which means we were only allowed to build these three ships here. But I take it that's not too bad. With those three ships, we can really start forming maybe a fleet, moving it up, maybe forming a dart fleet, which would give us more and more speed. For example, we can go after Alpha Centauri here. We need some defenses. I'm relatively certain the slavers will come to get us. And then it's basically, yeah, that's the growth action or the growth phase done. We are moving into the trade phase. Maybe one thing I should mention while I see that here. Instead of, let's say, playing a research action, for example, let's say I'm not going to research for my next turn. I could have instead used this turn order down or turn order down. Down doesn't really make sense unless I really want to be the last player for whatever reason. This simply adds me or increases my turn order position by one. But I think right now I had better things to do or more important things to do. Sooner or later, I will have to do that no matter what, especially if I can continue to trade with my friends from the Genetic Farmers Coalition, that is. So let's do trade, in fact. So now we have to check if there are technologies where they are more advanced and there must be a technology where I am a more advanced. Luckily, that is the case. So they are more advanced here in military and I'm more advanced 
in propulsion, which means they are learning the propulsion technology from me, whereas I am going to learn one level of military technology, which also allows me to gain one advanced fleet tactic. And I think I want to, yeah, get a fleet tactic for my counter assault fleet playing a little bit more defensively here. So this is typically two plus two per ship if versus an A fleet. So if they come to us with an assault flip ship, which is more powerful than us, we can basically somewhat negate that now. So I guess that's a good thing, is it? Or do we want really a fast? Mm, we could do fast. No, let's go for a really fast dart fleet. So this helps me moving through the galaxy much quicker. Yeah, let's do that instead. Okay, this was that. And last but not least, we are scoring for the current round. So again, we are still an STS player, no, STO player actually. So we get one point for that just because again, we are being cool. And then we get one point for each civilization we are in contact with. We are currently in contact with the genetic farmers, which gives us yet an additional victory point for that. Hooray. I take that. And then, yeah, we are moving into the next round of the game, into the first era of darkness. But I think I will end my playthrough for today. At the start of this era, we will get one of those extra domination cards. Uh, let me do that real quick. So I will lay it over here so that I don't forget it. I will not look at it just yet. We will cover that at the start of the next video. And then we will basically continue from here. So far, I must say, unless I'm really completely misunderstanding some of the core rules of the iPlayers, I think this is a very, very easy to follow solo mode, which is usually a big thing in my book. And I'm really enjoying this. There are a ton of difficult decisions that you have to do in this game, even for solo alone. So I'm really also can't wait to put this onto the table playing this at least with, I don't know, two, three other players. So let me know what you think and definitely make me aware of any rule scoops of maybe stupid things I, I'm typically doing in these kind of games to make me aware or try to re repair that as much as possible. Also send in your recommendations in respect of what I should be doing next. Really, really curious to hear from you on what I should focus and what not. Should I, for example, also turn, go the other way? I could really change my alignment to go to the STS side of things. In this case, I could then start taking out some of these primitive worlds, which would then ultimately help me to achieve my spatial goal here much easier. That's 11 points or destiny points, I believe. And again, our goal is to reach at least 70 to make it into the second stage of the scoring table here. So yeah, again, let me know what you think. And yeah, really hope to see you soon in one of my other videos. And yeah, with that being said, bye-bye.